It's fun to gossip about rules with limited information. Hi everyone, we're back and we're going over Dread Mob today and also Speed Mob, I think. Speed Freaks, Speed Mob. There'll always be a Speed Mob to me. RAP, sweet Octarius detachment. Our friend Ospex Tactics seems to have just posted the entire codex on his channel, which is very funny. About a week before release, I'm sure he has an NDA with Games Workshop and they let him do that. Good for him. Who, who am I to shame piracy? We're about to pirate him again. I have no ground to stand on. Walkers are cool. We like them. This has been posted a lot already. I think like as of a week ago already. So I won't go over it that much. But if you don't know, yeah, uh, we have dark packs now. Orcs have dark packs. It's basically what this is. You can get uh, sustained hits, lethal, or plus two AP by rolling on this fun little chart here. I think most of the time, you probably just take the hazardous test and choose one. But it's fun to roll if you like gambling like me. Or like fun like other people, but not me. I like gambling, but not fun. Here's all the dread mob strats. Uh, bigger shells for bigger gets. This one's very good. You want this on these fellas a lot. Nice that they're aware of it. That's what goes together. You definitely want hazardous with this most of the time. Uh, damage four rockets feels pretty nuts though. Uh, as this points out, I think most people are excited about the damage to Gorkonaut, which is also very good, but Gorkonauts are kind of expensive for what they do. Sort of, maybe, maybe I'm wrong about that. We'll see. We'll go over the list I built in a sec, but it has two Gorkonauts in it just because I like them. I think you could do three if you really want. It just feels like if you do three, you'll have a really bad day sometimes in certain matchups. Like, oh, I don't know towel that might suck for you and you can keep them in like strat reserve and etc but yeah i think just like three big fellas without a knight of invuln is like uh kind of rough stuff sometimes clanking claws i don't know if this is on a specific walker or a unit if it's a unit then kill cans are eating really good if it's just one guy then plus one damage is cool i think like with the gorkonaut sweep they have a sweep, right? Yeah, yeah, their sweep would go to damage three, strength 10, which is pretty cool. It's still AP one, which isn't great, but you get 15 attacks, so. Uh. Plus one damage for the Gorkonaut strike going to damage seven, probably not necessary. If if you're a Death Dread enthusiast like me, it's like pretty good on them. I think Death Dreads are not an insane competitive option, but I like them a lot, and I think they're like fine. To be clear, I like them as little guys, uh, as abstract pieces of math that only exist as a data sheet without a fun cool picture of a robot i like them a lot less i think they're like workable and i know a lot of other people are probably excited about death dreads too so maybe that should be my goal instead of just like uh bullying bully bullying my way to uh the, the top of local rtts as everyone looks on sad we should try to uh diversify and come up with a fun dread model list instead uh let me know if it's something you'd want to see here i'll get a death dread to hang out with look at his little guy and his weapons that'll never be WYSIWYG. so yeah we're gonna try clanking claw on him um it seems fine plus one damage for one cp you're probably getting like an average of bonus three damage and two points of strength for a strength 14 break point and two to three more damage total then you're going to strength 14 which means that he's wounding on threes against like any t12 vehicle which is pretty cool <laughs> it's not it's, it's actually not that good but you, you gotta try and get excited about something in life right Rural advance rules and range weapons gain assault is cool for Gorkonaut. Um, if it's a walker unit, the lack of specification on these stratagems uh, uh, feels bad. Maybe he actually go went over that in audio and it's my fault, but... Yeah, if it's a whole walker unit, then uh, kill cans are like definitely just the best thing here, but I'm sure if that's true. Yep, daka daka daka, uh, bonkers. Definitely want that. Definitely want that all the time on a Gorkonaut. I didn't build a stomp -a list, but I probably will in the future. I think stompas are still just something that unfortunately probably dies turn one a lot of the time and uh, you are big sad. Uh, if they don't deep strike, if you could keep them in strategic reserve, I think it would help a lot. The legality of even bringing them in from strategic reserve is like uh questioned at some tournaments where like the model was too big to fit wholly within six inches of a table edge so uh and either way he's like so fucking big that he's like kind of easy to screen out and fit anywhere yeah theoretically maybe on a stompa go wild if you want to do that if you're about that lifestyle i don't i don't i won't judge you yeah on a on a gorkonaut probably your best bet uh if it's if again like a whole unit uh, crazy crazy good kill cans again but otherwise gorkonaut can i have ingrowance i think people are not a appreciating as much as they should be this feels like a very good stratagem to me uh reenactory moves like a lot of people are probably envisioning moving the gretchen's 
like back. I'm imagining you move them forward a lot of the time to like further move block and disrupt your opponent. Seems pretty annoying to set up a grot screen and then your uh, opponent ends a move and you get closer to them if they're not like touching them basically. Yeah, it feels good for like move blocking shenanigans and disrupting their plans. Plus on a four up, they take uh, a huge chunk of mortals just for fun. Don't hate that either. But yeah, you should you should, you should use this strat for uh, moving grots and the mortals are a fun thing. I wouldn't use this for the mortals unless I'm like desperate because otherwise saving that cp for tank shock or grenade is like probably better a lot of the time it's at least more consistent versus like this you have to roll the d3 plus one for the mortals and it only happens on a four up versus grenade is like statistically you'll get three mortal wounds through uh just for paying the cp because you have um six chances to roll four up and tank shock most of the time you'll probably do between like four to six mortals of any like orc unit that you'd want to tank shock with so so just strictly better uh, ways of getting mortals. But this is kind of cool in that like, if you're, say your opponent has a Catan shard that's like, well, they wouldn't be on one wound because they heal all the time. But like, if your opponent has something that's like on like one or two wounds uh, that really wants to move, you can just dare them and then uh, they get grot bombed to death. Uh, extra gubbins, minus one damage is, is, is fine. If it's, a, if it's a whole unit of kill cans, it's very good. Um, for an individual death dread it's like probably not worth it outside of like niche scenarios i think there's like a lot of cases where you do like say you're getting pelted by two damage weapons you probably pop it and probably through the combat instead as a result but like i think a lot of the time um if it, if it works for again like a full unit of kill if these all just work on an entire unit of kill cans then like the list i built has like 18 of them anyways but who boy those are those are, there's some powerful little grot robots so we'll go over list now but that's dread mob and take a screenshot of the enhancements but some of those are worth noting uh the minus one to be hit like stealth keyword give to a unit with a mech is like fine the ignore cover one is like quite good but i think like the only unit you'd probably want to have receive that is like a unit of Ludas, which are like not great. Maybe like a custom Mega Cannon three brick with a big mech, but I don't think either of those are like fantastic, frankly. Uh, I put Ludas in this list because I like them and I, I think it's like another unit that people get excited about. They're just like cool. They feel very orky, right? Ludas are not uh, crazy good, um, but that shouldn't stop you from playing with them because I think they are like very playable. And if you own Ludas like me and are just like, ah, oh, we'll give we'll give them a shot. Yeah, let, let the Ludas play today. We'll see how they do then. Some of the enhancements can go well with them but uh yeah i'm i'm honestly not sold on them yet the the double like sustained and lethal on them feels like a trap to me because it's like 35 points or something crazy maybe 25 but it, it feels like a bit expensive for what it is Th this is the list that like i i want to believe in and the other one is the one that i feel like uh a lot better about uh yeah i'll, I'll go over both starting with pray for ludas okay so we have a big mech of shock attack on he goes with our ludas uh two normal mechs uh three death dreads gorkonaut gorkonaut one, two, three, four units of Grotz, a unit of three kill cans, two units of six kill cans, and then Volutas. So the Gorkonaut has transport capacity of 12, meaning you can put Volutas in there uh, along with the shock attack gun. He doesn't have firing deck, obviously, but I like the idea of like just using him as like a mobile ruin, basically. And then you probably try and set him up next to ruin so that like when he dies, they can all disembark on the other side and not be seen and get them a little more movement up the board so they can actually like see those objectives you want them to be shooting. Volutas are like not useful and do anything that's not on an objective. Like real hits is the only reason you really take them. But uh, it's nice that there's a strat but lets you target something with real all hits if you really need to but i think you're better off using that on your gorkonaut or on your kill cans if it does affect all of them than like on volutas and then like this is also only under the premise that uh the big mech of shock attack gun gives them access to the mech keyword so they can use all like the mech specific stuff and all the stratagems uh and also that they would get access to like the push that button ability if that's somehow not the case then i i think they're just bad and you never take them uh but if they do get that stuff then i think like loot is with like uh either sustained you probably give them sustained most of the time not lethal but uh yeah if you do have the points or want to try out the sustained and lethal thing like this is probably how i would make loot work just yeah big mech shock attack on the new big mech is allegedly 80 points which like feels way too much for me um and then rap kff uh which i would take strictly just because he's cheaper and the shock attack guns like who doesn't love a shock attack gun right their profile is like not as bad as people 
uh, think it is. It's like not a great gun, but uh, with like rear wall hits attached to Volutas for what 175 points, I think it's like it's fine. And then yeah, the triple dread, Def Dread. I, I just like Def Dreads. I think uh, they they probably are like from a competitive perspective, uh, quite over costed still at 130. But they have a two up save and like eight wounds. Uh, if you're keeping them in cover a lot of the time and able to move up the board without them, with like one or two of them making into combat, then like it's pretty cool. And I think like just the threat saturation of like uh, beefy vehicles you have in this list makes Death Dreads more appealing. And that like there's just this is like very much a stat check army. You just have like so many goddamn vehicles, you hope they can't kill them all. You probably have one unit of Garotsko and one of the Gorkonauts. Uh, he drops them off somewhere in Garot Daycare. They get out and then camp on that objective forever potentially farming UCP, uh, mostly just making it so that you don't have to leave something more important on that objective while the rest of the army pushes forward. Yeah, I don't know if this list ever makes it to your opponent's deployment zone, but I, I think it can like uh, like bully the midfield like relatively well. And uh, this this feels like a, a, a fun list to take to like an RTT or a small event where you're not super invested in trying to win the whole thing. Uh, I, I think you would have a good time and do like fine enough to make it worth it. This is the same thing, like refine slightly, clank, clank, or boink, bam, clank clank uh, the only characters here are two mechs i think if you're committing this hard to bring it down you really don't want to give up assassinate so just making it not even an option for your opponent to take feels good to me you know the boys to go inside of one of our gorkonauts two death treads i they're cute double gorkonaut again one two three f uh three units of gretchen in this list instead uh triple kill can two units of storm boys for objective play i think like this is definitely the better list. I think the first one suffers from not having something that can like deploy a teleport homer or cleanse or do something like that turn one. Even if you're taking uh, tactical and not fix, like the odds of you getting something that requires you to interact with a midfield objective on the first turn is like relatively high. And Storm Boys are like just always a great answer for that. Um, you keep at least one on the board and maybe one in reserve. Uh, in this list, I don't hate to win the board most of the time because I think you want them hanging around the middle of the board doing actions turn one rather than like I don't think this is a list where you take like fixed homers. Uh, I don't think you have quite enough action pieces for that. I think you could, it would be like, okay. But I think you probably take tactical a lot of the time with this list. Also because the, the stratagems for Dreadmob are like pretty good. So you wanna have access to a lot of CP. Yeah, the boys having Sticky is sick. It's fun that they get out of the Gorkonaut. I think like in the first list, realistically, you probably drop Valuta's shock attack on and like maybe a Death Dread for some Mega Knobs and then fill in the remaining points with like maybe more Killer cans or something either kill cans or storm boys for just like action units i think uh inside the gorkonauts yeah you probably want a unit of five meganops of a boss but like beast naga boys would also be fine if there's a unit you like more orcs have like a lot of options there's a lot of things that provide like very similar functions like beast naga boys are just boys that are a little better in combat but don't have sticky uh take those if you want something that's like a little bit better in combat if you want more volume of attacks take knobs inside of a gorkonaut instead right like it's just it's they're all fine i think all like the mainstay combat units you take with orcs that are infantry uh being like boys beast naga boys knobs and mega knobs are all like situationally very very good and better than each other into like different mashups which is good that's what you want right you want to have a reason to take like everything but uh yeah it just kind of depends on the rest of your uh, your list and like uh, how you like to play warhammer i think me and like a lot of people who make these kinds of videos like sometimes just focus on like like tournament stuff which is like great for the people who do that but like i recognize that the majority of the 40k player base is like more in the casual competitive side or just strictly casual so and i want to like recognize that and say things that are like more relevant to them too saying all this just to like reinforce the notion that these are like frameworks that i think are cool to build off of but not like like, A, I haven't played any of these yet, right? Uh, I'm going to play my first game with the new Codex later today, which I'm super excited about. Um, I'm, I'm sure there'll be, like, a lot of discoveries as I actually do play all these lists eventually that, like, I'll want to change aspects of them. But uh, I think these are, like, good starting points. And if you're, like, wanting to play Orcs but, like, don't know what units to, like, even, like, start with or where to look, I, I think this is, like, a like a pretty good guide that will uh, hopefully probably not age poorly for you. Again, yeah, kill can just feel like the best unit to me here. I think the new Gratsuka profile is like pretty decent too. Uh, I like rocket launches. They also have a new ability. I'm trying to remember what it is. Uh, and like 
There's like three different modifiers that you get that you can like roll for. I think on a one or two, they just take like D6 mortals. Uh, I think like one of them gives them more shots. The the kill can like little hazardous thing feels like situational, but I think you'll want to use a lot of the time. Also, I think one thing that helps with rockets is like, don't look at them as D3 shots. Look at them as D3 plus one. Because most of the time you don't want to shoot vehicles with them. You want to shoot like bricks of heavy infantry. That's like their ideal target. Um, this detachment has the plus one to wound against monsters and vehicles, which makes rockets a lot better into that kind of target. I think you're better off doing the 2 CP combo with the Gorkonaut for Daka Storm and the uh, plus one to wound monsters and vehicles. Or yeah, yeah, you want to uh, Daka Daka Daka. Um, some very similar strategy names going on here. Yeah, you want to generally have your CP go into bigger shells for bigger gets and Daka 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 on a Gorkonaut, I think. But if you uh, have something else you'd rather do, like 2 CP is quite a bit, right? So uh, I think if you just have one CP, uh, you do just this one uh, for a kill can unit. Like I, if I had to choose between the two, I would definitely choose Daka 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 on kill cans over bigger shells for bigger gets without Daka 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 on anybody. Uh, as somebody on Reddit pointed out, statistically on average, uh, Daka 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 and bigger shells for bigger gets with a mech nearby to give the Orgonaut plus one to hit uh, will like on average kill a Catan shard, which is pretty funny uh, or come close to it. And if not, then you can probably finish them off in combat because I think the best thing about this detachment is they're like decent in shooting, but they're all very good in melee too. Like, kill cans are great in combat um, if you have six of them, and they all, like, manage to actually fight. I think the biggest weakness of this list is, like, it's pot uh, potentially move blocked. And, like, yeah, sure, like, Gorkonaut can, like, walk over stuff, but they're pretty slow. They move, like, eight inches, right? So if your opponent is, like, any good at all at Warhammer, they'll just, like, make it so that you can't land anywhere, like, uh, eight inches on the other side of their units. So, like, I'll just use my hands because the camera's facing this way. Uh, say this is your Gorkonaut, right? You got your big guy here, and then your opponent has, like, a screening unit here. If we're not going to place it so you can just like walk over the other side, they're probably going to place it like as close to you as they can and also go like uh, far enough back that your base can't fully clear it. So I think like his ability to walk over enemy models is a little misleading. There would definitely be instances where like you're able to and that's great. But I, I think anyone who's like trying really hard can probably still move block you pretty well. But yeah, that said, I think uh, Drone Rob is like totally fine and 18 kilo can seem sick to me. Okay, Cult of Speed, yay. So yeah, they can advance and shoot. They can also shoot and fall back. Those are crazy good. They're good because shooting's fun, but they're also very good for actions and action economies. Unfortunately, what wins most of Warhammer. It's just the 10th edition world we live in. Your ability to stand on an objective on a corner and do nothing for a turn is what uh, gives you the points that makes you win the game. So yeah, the, the ability to do uh, that always with units that are very, very fast is sick. And that's why I think Cult of Speed is a sleeper army. I feel like everything I've built so far and looked at for them results in an army that kills almost nothing. But uh, it's just it's like such crazy board control and pressure that uh, you're opponent is like very annoyed and gets to do nothing while you just like buzz around them like flies let's go over their stratagems real quick speediest freaks is like okay i can see it being fun on like a battle wagon or something actually, i should don't know if they have the seed freaks keyword in which case never mind yeah okay they don't it explicitly says that never mind uh i think speediest freaks is like cool on a big unit of bikes with a death kill attached to them generally there's probably better stuff you want to spend cp on though but like i can see it being fine there i kind of don't hate squig flinging actually just because like it's not great but i think there's a lot of times where like making someone take a battle shock test at minus one is like pretty good uh there's a lot of defensive combat stratagems in the game that would be nice to shut down like for instance your choppers are ap1 if you force a unit of, let's say, like, Harfkin to not be able to use Void Armor in combat by making them fail Battleshock, that's, like, pretty awesome. It's another reason I think Death Dreads are kind of cool, too. Yeah, it just, like, if your opponent has a fight on Death that costs CP and they fail their Battleshock, like... Whoops, guess uh, that unit's just gone. I think like a unit failing Battleshock like can win you the game sometimes. And I think like it's just a meme to say Battleshock does nothing. But I think in reality, it actually does like quite a bit. Like like shutting down strats your opponent wants to use is like really good. Uh, it's also uh, sometimes useful for like making, say you're playing the Orc Mirror and they've got like 20 boys on an objective. If you make those boys take a Battleshock test at minus one and fail, and you can somehow have like a single model land on that objective, uh, then you can out OC them for like if you have a tactical mission that like secure no man's land or something like if, if you need uh to flip an objective at some point in the game uh during your turn like on obviously on their turn they'll auto pass battle shock and have it back but uh i think yeah there's i don't hate like i probably will use this at some point playing speed mob uh i don't think it'll like come up that often but it's it's okay sustain two is great I, I think you use Daka Storm on Def Coptas. It's like totally fine on war bikes and 
docket jets too i just like generally don't love their shooting and i think def coptas are like genuinely pretty good against their preferred target which is like sort of mid to heavy armored infantry blitz of fire and not being able to be conf uh combined with docket storm feels real bad but I, I think this is like again pretty good in coptas i think most of these you want to put on coptas plus the moon on charge is great for war bikes makes them a lot scarier i like that like you can do this on something that they're already wounding on threes for twos too and uh yeah more gets over here is super good react to moves are just always like insanely powerful so uh i think a lot of the time you're going to use this on war bikers like but like maybe on def cop does too yeah let's go over the two a little list that i mean if i can find the tab there we go okay so this first list uh, goes to a total of 1,960 points because I'm saving 35 for the thing that lets you have assault ramp, uh, which is like <laughs> so funny. That's I mean, I think that's like a huge reason you take this attachment, too. I think that makes it like way scarier. And otherwise, I think it would just like would not have uh, the damage to be able to like compete in certain contexts but um i think like if you just have like one unit of uh for instance in this list that's a war boss and mega armor i'd be giving the enhancement to and he's got a bunch of knobs with him um a bunch of mega knobs with him but like the other one has 20 boys in it you could do this on the unit of 10 knobs too it's that's probably like the best unit you want it on but knobs are like, quite expensive so and uh for these lists i wanted to showcase like the more conventional speed freak units instead of just making into like another uh pressure them with knobs army so uh characters uh there's two death kill war tricks here you can make one a uh, war boss and war bike if you want to i think they're like kind of comparable enough they literally have the same same abilities one's just five points less and uh it's like a little less wounds i think that's the only difference really uh but death kill war check also has a huge base which i like oh, well, war bosses and war bikes are classic so i put one on here yeah so the double death kill is uh war boss and mega armor war boss and war bike uh one truck that's going to be four are mega knobs and war boss and mega armor two units of six death coptas who i think along with war bikes are like kind of the heart of this army yeah time will tell but that they seem like one of the best things in here to me i think you can make this into two three-man dev copters instead if you want them as like more of utility action pieces that might be better but the stratagems are very exciting so for now i'm leaving mine as uh two six man so that you have access to use those exciting stratagems with their full potential but that enthusiasm might fade over time then you just uh go back to being a msu action monkey like a like the game mechanically uh wants you to yeah two units of 10 grots grots are always great triple scrap jets i'm not convinced these are good yet but they're pretty cheap and the ability to advance and do actions makes them a lot better three shop jump tracks which uh the shock jumps like their damage isn't that good but the ability to teleport everywhere the whole game is uh sick and i i love them as utility pieces unit of storm boys a unit of of, and then three units of six war bikers i think um there's some models that are probably pretty good in most lists like lone weird boy i like a lot snicker i like a lot but i want to make these like more thematic so that's why there's some choices that might feel like staples that aren't seen here i think like like i said earlier you can put in different combat units than the uh or boss and mega armor if you want to and his mega knobs the reason I have these in here is because I think the targets they're good into is a target that the rest of his army kind of struggles with. Like, uh, the death kill all rockets, like, uh, whatever those can kill, knobs can probably kill too, and vice versa. So, knobs are just going to have a bunch of like strength 10, AP2, two, two damage attacks, right? The mega knobs get you to like strength, I think, 13 in WOG with uh, twin link kill size, which are AP3. Um, that'll kill like a Rogel Dorn in a way that knobs won't like any like a big tank above a certain threshold. These guys can comfortably delete like the majority of a big knight, um, if not all of it, if they get lucky. And uh, targets like that are something that I feel like this army isn't great into. Uh, this <laughs> army. It's like, as far as damage goes, uh, honestly, mostly just get into whatever war bikes are into, but it, it is very good for board control and then just like trying to keep your opponent physically in their, like locked in their deployment zone. A death kill war trike and six bikes on the line, you wog first turn, go up 18. Uh, if your opponent is on the line for some reason, then like, yeah, you just wog and charge them. So bearing in mind that, I think this list still has like a lot of flexibility. Uh, my gut instincts is like long-term, I might want to change just to have more msu it feels like a little divided between it wants to do uh i'm also not very confident in scrap jets but i like them so i, I want to try and field them
um, the the custom booster blaster and the boomdaka snazwagon. The boomdaka has that like six inch aura of minus one to hit, and then the uh, custom booster blaster, whatever it targets, gets minus one to hit. Those are both pretty good. So there's like a lot of things that you could like swap out for whatever. And and then again, these are just like like first takes, right? I got to play test these. I got to see what feels good over time and refine them. Something like this feels like a cool place to start. This next list is pretty similar for the most part. Again, we're leaving 35 points left over for that upgrade that gives us assault ramp. Double death kill a pain boy and a war boss. So uh, in this instance, the upgrade, the enhancement for vehicle moves, then uh, guys inside disembarking can still charge is going to go on the war boss here. Uh, with him, there's a pain boy and 20 boys. These are going to go in a battle wagon. Uh, there is a boom dock, a snaz wagon here. Uh, we have a six man copta and a three man copta. Two units of 10 grads, three scrap jets still, which I think like you could definitely swap one of these out for another boom dock, a snaz wagon. Um, the triple shock jumps, one unit of storm boys, a uh, small unit of bikes, and then double big bike. Uh, reason being, and I don't want to have five characters because that gives up max assassinate. Then you give up max assassinate and bring it down pretty easily, and that's just too many free points for your opponent. I think even taking four characters feels a little risky here to me. I want to try the pain boy war boss and 20 boys together, but I think long term, there's definitely a world in which I caught the pain boy for another buggy or just more bikes. Uh, him being another storm boy unit for actions also seems pretty good. Yeah, again, maybe not. Uh, you may, I don't know if you need this many scrap jets. Uh, I think two shock jump dragses is realistically probably enough to get the job done most of the time. I don't know if you need that many for doing actions. It seems redundant unless you're just trying to save like one the whole game for like engage at the end or something. But uh, yeah, just an example of a, a similar list with uh, a little bit of variety if, if you own these units or happen to like them more. Like who doesn't love a battle wagon with uh, 20 boys or a boss and a pain boy in it? Like that's just that's just good clean fun. And then finally we have a uh, MS Rim 2 Tokyo Drift, which is the sequel to this list. This one does have five characters, which is probably a mistake. But uh, running three death kill war trucks just felt like fun. So I've got the three death killers, two war bosses, double truck, boom dock, a snaz wagon, two squads of six death coptas, two units of grots, a unit of 10 knobs, uh, a unit of, or sorry, a unit of five knobs, unit of 10 knobs, uh, just two shock jumps, which is probably all you need. Um, and you still have three units of war bikers in here. This is like, uh, a little bit more of a conventional work list of like your giant knob bricks. I think you could swap out either five of these knobs for war boss and mega armor and um, a unit of the mega knobs to go with them. I think you could try and work in points for a battle wagon here too, if you wanted to. Uh, I think realistically, you probably cut one of these death kills and then do six, six, three for the war bike just to have less characters too. Cause yeah, you, you ideally want to be at four or less characters if you have uh, functionally free, like you can't take death coptas about just making it like the easiest uh, max bring it down of your opponent's life. Like this just gives up way too much bring it down. And I think like, unfortunately, just like the way secondaries work in 10th, uh, like it's 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 pretty rough to have five characters and also this many vehicles together. So, and uh, yeah, like it's not guaranteed your opponent maxes this, right? Like you can be sneaky with your death kills. They are very fast, but they're a little hard to hide. Real less durable and don't have the four if you want to pain in this detachment at least either. So, but uh, yeah, general game plan, deploying a homer a lot of time in your opponent's backfield seems pretty good you can do one in the middle too uh homer a lot of some some people don't realize like you don't have to be wholly within your opponent's deployment zone to deploy one you just have to have your unit partially within so like if the tip of a biker is touching your opponent's deployment zone they can do that otherwise you could have like a shock jump or something teleport back there turn one deploy one in your opponent's uh deployment zone uh or just have them like do one in the midfield if they screen you out which is like fine you're still getting points for that i think you could still take cleanse here if you wanted to i think engage is also not that bad ideally if they give up if if they also give up a million bring it down or something you take that over like engage or cleanse but if you have to for fixed options i think those are like pretty fine you also also have the ability to do tactical a lot here and uh i think you probably do tactical more often with this list just because you don't have that many action pieces of the way i built them you could build this for even more buggies and less damage and like just like say like i think this one probably has the most action pieces like these 
scrap chats a lot of the time realistically will just function like like trucks doing a lot of lists or they're 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 mostly there just to like score you secondary points but if they shoot something and kill it like great you can also use them for immortal wounds in case of emergency but i view the scrap chats more as like another thing to do actions with than like a real damage piece it's more like they're they're uh they're like one of those like dollar store bottle openers that is also like a can opener or like there's like they're not great at either but they can do both if you need them to it's okay you might be able to open a can at least for a little while yeah and again like the other lists like any list anybody is posting anywhere online now i think these will change a lot over time and it's gonna take some play testing and also just seeing like uh what other people are doing right like things in warhammer are only as good as what you're playing against is so based on like how tal feel i know like people the book has been like not out but uh publicly owned by many people who bought that back Battle Force for a little bit, I think. Um, and most events aren't allowing it still, but some are. So, like, depending on what tower up to, you probably want to shift some stuff around here on account of them. Uh, or, like, what other, other like, uh, factions are, like, very good and popular. Like, Necrons are one to consider just because they're, like, a list that can win events, but is also, like, just a huge gatekeeper. And if you can't beat Necrons, you can't win an event. Uh, I'm not worried too much about Necrons right now because I feel like, A, Orcs generally are, like, okay into Necrons. At least, like, previously, the WOG tried the attachment. I would say it was, like, very good into Necrons uh, if you played it correctly. But uh, I think also Necrons would be hit with a data slate, like, uh, relatively soon, as, as might Orcs. But they typically tend to let a Codex, like, breathe for a while before adjusting in a data slate. Like, orcs might get off for the next like four months or so which would be crazy uh yeah those are those are some first take lists though um i think i'm gonna try out bully boys and maybe uh, a speed mob or a dread mob list later if we have time i'm very excited about our new mega knob overlords that's something i didn't realize when i made my video yesterday is that they have a four up this like wasn't posted publicly yet but they have a four up funeral pain during the wog yeah it's brutal i think like I can't, I can't imagine an orc list that's like better than uh, 16 to 18 mega knobs with double wog. And then like you just build the rest of your list around that. Uh, yeah, for, for now, I will probably be running bully boys competitively. But I, I, I kind of hope I'm wrong and like speed freaks or something feels better. But uh, yeah, I gotta, gotta have to play some games against different armies and see how those go. Uh, anyways, thanks for watching. Uh, you can like or comment or do engagement stuff if you want. If you're new here, subscriptions appreciated. I mostly do hobby videos, but I do a lot of this kind of stuff too. And it's going to be more as the codex comes out and I actually play games and do a little battle reports and things. So stick around for that if you're interested. Uh, I also have a Patreon if you like this kind of content. Donations are always appreciated. Uh, I want to start putting a lot of STLs up there too. I like model stuff and uh, want to get back into posting it. And a uh, new exciting thing is uh, there's a Patreon tier for $5 now. And if you join that, I'm going to raffle off models every month. I have a lot of orcs in my collection. Not this guy, he's too precious to me, but many models like him you could win. I'm just going to start raffling off stuff as like a fun little incentive. I have a lot of like surplus of models I don't need and also models I'm making for videos that I don't really necessarily have space for. So uh, yeah, we're going to do a bunch of raffles in the upcoming months. If you want to go to Patreon or if you are a Patreon and you want to join the $5 tier instead of the $0.69 cent or uh, $4.20 meme tiers that I have, then you'll be eligible for raffle stuff. And uh, yeah, there'll be a link to all that below. Uh, either way, thanks for watching this video today. And I hope you're excited about the art codex too and have some fun new uh, leaked games over the weekend. Goodbye. See you in the next one.